with a couple of the coolest people here at MIP TV working on an incredible documentary called Rumble, The Indians Rock the World. This is Stevie Salas and Christina Fawn. And uh, I've seen the trailer. I haven't seen the documentary yet, but I saw the premise and the whole reason why this thing needed to exist. Uh, tell us a little bit about how this all came together. I'm going to start with you, Stevie. Um, well, you know, I'm a Native American, and I've been kind of playing rock and roll my whole life on a pretty high level with a lot of superstars. and. And, uh, you know, one day I was playing, you know, as a young man with Rod Stewart at Madison Square Gardens, and I thought to myself, it's like, I, there's not a lot of guitar players that look like me. So I started to research if there was other, you know, Native American musicians out there. And, I, and as, the, as I dug in, I started to realize there were a lot. It's just people didn't know it. Um, and then I was uh, in Canada doing a concert opening for the Rolling Stones at this huge outdoor event with ACDC and a bunch of bands and I met a guy called Brian Wright McLeod who was writing a Native American encyclopedia mm. about all the recorded music and history by Native American people. He was interviewing me and he really turned me on to you know these guys Jesse Ed Davis and Link Ray and 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 that sort of that really got the seeds going and from there we created a Smithsonian exhibit about these guys and then I met Christina and had just made a documentary called Real Engine that dealt with a Native American portrayal and feature films and stereotypes and things and I thought oh this this could be a good combination and uh, four years later it's finally done and somehow we're still alive and I haven't lost my hair <laughs> we're still we're still talking to each other barely <laughs> barely talking but things are going well so we, we ended up um, you know having a, a very great deadline because we got into Sundance we didn't even think that we'd finish the film on time oh, wow. and then yeah, it so wasn't even done it was like Sundance said it and then it, we weren't even close to it being yeah. edited but something about a, having a serious deadline like that that caused us to the whole team to really buckle down and, and put, get it together otherwise we might still be fussing over details right now well, yeah, and we sure. went on to win uh, in the world documentary category the special jury award for masterful storytelling it's awesome yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not only did we not even think we were going to get into Sundance, yeah. you know, we, we, we actually won, which was really, really... That's amazing. So how did you guys meet? Were you recommended to well, each it's other? It's a funny story because, uh, of course, Facebook. Yeah. Adam, uh, we, Adam Beach, right? Yeah, we have a common friend. I did a series called Moose TV uh, mm -hmm. with um, our company, Resolution Pictures, a couple of years, a few, few years ago. Anyways, and he, so I was just looking and we, I opened up a, a gaming company um, and he had an app for a guitar a or guitar app. Guitar app. Yeah. And I thought, oh, great, who's this guy? I'm gonna ask him, maybe he needs uh, you know, some game games or whatever. And then we started talking and he said, yeah, but I have this, uh, you know, I did an exhibit and, and I said, oh, we, we do movies. And so then I sent him a bunch of our films, particularly Real Engine, and, and then he begged us to do the film with him. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how we got. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were, I mean, it, it was a great team. Like, we, we, you know, so Catherine Bainbridge, who's my producing partner, directed the film, and Alfonso Mairana, uh, who's done a bunch of uh, Hollywood films, was a co-director and did the DOP, it was director of photography. And I mean, it was a massive film. It took, you know, more than over four years and, and I, I always say it as a joke because Stevie would always say, what are we doing here, Gone with the Wind? It's like, yeah. let's get this thing done, right? It's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, like, and you know, the Canadians work a little different than Americans. Uh, you know, we, uh, we would show up with like this, right? Really yeah. gorilla. Yeah. And everything I do is like in and out, especially when you're shooting massive because our film's full of superstars, right? And yeah. with a superstar, you kind of almost be invisible in a yeah. lot of ways because everybody freaks out for yes. no reason, 90% of the time, by the way. Yeah. It's always that, the handlers that are freaking out. Yeah. But they, you know, with, with uh, Resolution, they wanted the cinematography to be over the top, which in the beginning I was, I was against. Um, I wanted it more gorilla, but I was dead wrong because the cinematography, the beauty, the contrast between archival footage and the, the beauty of some of the stuff that Fawn shot is just, it's a great, it's a great combination. Well, you talk to some megastars in this, even in your trailer, I think it kicks off with Martin Scorsese. I mean, yeah. you've got some amazing people in this thing. Was everybody eager to talk? Was everybody well, like right on board with this concert? A, yeah, I mean, most of the people were. It just took a long time because they're famous and busy and yeah. doing a bunch of things. And so we had to, you know, work around their schedule. So that was one of the elements that that made the film take so long and Stevie has amazing relationships with m most of the people that are in our film so that really helped and you know one of the things that we wanted to do and, and Stevie could could uh, address that too is that you know these people are were unknown mu uh, unknown native icons musicians and we wanted the the biggest and the most famous musicians in the world to say how great they were we didn't want them or, or other native people to say it and well, well, well the thing is is they 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 are unknown to normal people but to the most famous people in the world they were like 
the, 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 you know, Steven Tyler could, could just wanted to talk about Jesse Ed Davis because he, you know, you when these people were so important. Jeff Beck would talk about Link Ray, like I'm 17 years old playing air guitar in my bedroom at my mom's house, the Link Ray. I mean, to them, these people were so important, but to the general public, they're like, had no idea who these people were. Stevie, did you grow up with, uh, you know, heroes that, on stage? That you know, my heroes were the same guys, like Slash is, is in our film, and Slash and I are old pals. And yeah. He said, you know, one day, you know, we all grew up playing, being guitar players, we all listened to the, the standard guys, you know, the Holy Grail, the Jimmy Page, the Jeff Beck, the Eric Clapton, the Jimi Hendrix, yeah. uh, Pete Townsend. And then Slash said to me, you know, one day I was sitting around on tour and I wanted to figure out, I thought to myself, well, who did those guys learn from? And you know, this name Link Ray just kept coming up. You know, and then years later when punk rock exploded in New York, there was Link Ray again. From 1958, he, he influenced uh, you know, Led Zeppelin and The Who and all the biggest bands that we know, The Kinks. And, and then, you know, 20 years later, he's already, you know, a, a, an old man, but by this time he's doing, playing with Robert Gordon in New York City at Max's Kansas City wow. and influenced the whole punk rock movement. <laughs> and then, you know, you talked about Robert Rodriguez, you yeah. know, from Dust of Dawn, he's my friend in Austin, Texas. Robert brings him back uh, in his movies and starts using them. And then Robert got Tarantino to, to put Rumble in Pulp Fiction. And next thing you know, he's a, there's Link Ray again now influencing rock and roll. So if you sit and talk to Johnny Depp and he's like, oh, Link Ray, he's known as the, the coolest of the cool. And here's a guy that was like 70 years old, the, you know, that was, you know, totally, completely influencing from Johnny Depp to Jimmy Page, to, you know, to everybody. Uh, so where was it cut? Was it all cut with your studio? Yeah, so yeah. We, we're based in Montreal, mm -hmm. Resolution Pictures. Uh, we've been making films for 20 years, and we have a, a, a office space uh, in, in, in Montreal, in the MyLand, mm -hmm. and our edit, and edit suite is there too. And um, yeah, so we, we shot it around all over, all, over planet, yeah, all, really? over, all over North America, and then um, we ended up uh, putting it together uh, in the office. Who were you most excited to put into the movie? I'll start with you, Stevie. I was pretty excited that Iggy Pop did the film. Yeah. Because um, Iggy's just so cool. Um, but to tell you the truth, I was excited just about almost everybody, you know, to have Jackson Brown tell you how Jesse Ed Davis walked into the recording studio and, and played the guitar solo on Dr. My Eyes. And, you know, these things that are really historic. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. So for me, it was just exciting. You know, all these guys excited me. You know, some of the stuff that didn't get in the movie. We have hours and hours of yeah. amazing interview footage of these guys. Yeah. There's just so many amazing things that we just couldn't fit in. Are you going to do something with it? I mean, yeah, you've got YouTube already, and all kinds of... We're already doing uh, little capsules. Um, if you go to the Rumble, the Indians Who Rock the World Facebook page, yeah. um, you'll see that once in a while we're putting out special little clips that aren't in the film, like Dan Auerbach from the Black Keys. We just posted that little two-minute clip where he's putting the Link Ray record on and nice. listening to it in his studio, and it's pretty awesome. That's fantastic. Who were you most excited about in, in the film? I, I think everyone was, I mean, I was very happy and excited to... She wanted Madonna in the film. Yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> she's I wanted, to, I, wanted to, I wanted us to interview Cher. Yeah, but, you know, uh, we did try to get Cher, and, you know, I was speaking with Cher <laughs> on and off for three years, yeah. trying to make it happen, and we just, you know, some of those ones, it just doesn't come together. You know, you, you literally sometimes it'll take a year. We went back and forth with Eric Clapton, for years, and then finally, Eric sent me an, an email talking about Jesse Davis, and we ended up just using his quote, you know, yeah. of, of from Clapton because it's just, you know, you, yeah. every, it's really hard to get superstars to sit down and talking about the best in the world, right there. Yeah. These are the names like every, like they're the best I mean, in the world. We, we, yeah. we wanted to get Bob Dylan too. We tried. And we tried everything yeah. for Bob Dylan. Bob even, Dylan even, couldn't even get his Nobel Priest Prize. Yeah. So as <laughs> it's the thing though. Yeah. So we were getting close with Bob. Yeah. So my last ditch effort was, you know, she, uh, Christina Fon's uh, Jewish and Bob Dylan's Jewish. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take you to a Bob Dylan concert, and she's his very pretty, plan. right? She's yeah. very pretty, and she dressed really nice. And, and we're backstage talking to the band because Charlie Sexton, the guitar player, is in our film. And he's also my neighbor in Austin, and my cool. 20 years, 25 years, my buddy. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna let Christina Fon all bubbly and happy walk around backstage, and I think Bob Dylan would be like, "Who's that?" And I thought that's our last chance of getting Bob in. So, I figured if he, if he talked to her, she could get him to do yeah. the film. Yeah. This we is let's, this close. let's let's play spot the American no, yeah, right here, exactly. right? Exactly. Like I would cast her out with a fishing yeah. line. Like politically a, incorrect. <laughs> whatever it takes. Hey, when you're a filmmaker, any of our filmmakers out there, you do whatever it takes. Yeah. True. But almost have, whatever it takes. But on a serious note, and I, I said I've said it before. For it was it was actually one of the most um, 
I would say humbling experiences for me was to be in New Mexico with John Trudell and we dedicated the film to him and he was he was amazing he was so gracious and he's so smart and funny and his 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 thought process is so out of the box yeah so it was really interesting and and um, you know, he, I think it was his last, probably his last interview, so we were very lucky. Oh, that's amazing. Is this um, like a, a work of inspiration for you now to kind of go forward and do more along this no, line? or never doing it again. Or never going to talk <laughs> to each other? Is this the last conversation? You know what, you though? I have to say, we've, we did Real Engine, which is uh, which won a Peabody Award. and. Yeah. It was it was a very difficult film to make as well. Mm -hmm. the feature documentaries are so are so hard to do, but this one in particular, just because of what we've been talking about, all yeah. the, the the famous people in it. But we also wanted to to make something that, and I, Stevie could talk about that too, like something that people will remember, but not not something that's necessarily political or because it just the content is political. But we wanted to make it entertaining. We wanted to have a great stories. We wanted it to be beautiful. All of that is so hard, yeah. and and so and everybody was so passionate about it. I think the difficulty was that everyone wanted it to be so great, yeah. so that you know, so everyone was just. I mean, it was it, it was hard. It was very hard. It was worth it because in the end, you know, we're winning awards. It's going around the world. We're going to have a theatrical release. Um, You're in Cannes, showing it off. Cannes. You're exactly. it, it, it changed written history, and not just Native American history, but it changed North American the development. When you start to realize the story of the music in the melting pot of cultures is really the story of yeah. the development in North America, you know, Canada yeah. and the United States in the earlier days before well, it was that. Well, it's global now, man, yeah. right? Yeah. Like all of that stuff has just been picked up and lifted and, and taken all over the world. Yeah, I mean, it, you get to, you start to realize that there was a deeper, whole deeper thing going on there with, with all the cultures, not just Native American and yeah. African American, but the, uh, it, all the things, you know, there's racism everywhere. The hard part, like you said, though, was I was adamant that we make a, a film about some heroes that did amazing things and not a victim film and not a yes you really screwed us again you know yeah. you screwed me over again i'm an indian yeah. you fucked me again you know we didn't yeah. want to do that we yeah. wanted to say hey, you know we're going to celebrate these what these guys achieved against all odds and what they did you know jesse ed davis played with all four beatles right so you can talk about racism if you want to lean on the negative it's there i mean come on where in the world would you have a guy who played with all four beatles played with the rolling stones played with eric clapton eric clapton played with him he played with um with um, Rod Stewart, he was in the Faces, and 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 nobody knows his name. Yeah, you know what I mean. I yeah. played with a few people, and more people around the world know my name than his name. And he's played with the Beatles. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean. So you start to wonder where the injustices come because anybody else, you got to. If he was a guy from England, he'd probably be one of those, you know, mm -hmm. legends right now. And he's a legend to the musicians, but he should be a legend to all people who yeah, love music. And, and I think we, we want to give credit to the director, Catherine Bainbridge, and you've talked about it before how she was you know, so um, just smart and, and creative in the way that she was able to insert the history and the politics and keep it entertaining. Yeah. And co-director, again, Alfonso Myron, I just want to give credit to you them. You got to always do the mega credits because in Canada they're so sensitive they all get pissed off at each other. In America we're like, who cares? But it's like, yeah, the, but the but directors... That's not why I'm saying it. I actually think <laughs> no, that they, they deserve... Did an, they they've... did an incredible job. It, the, the, the hardest thing, that's a, it's a fine line to dance that Catherine had to do of of because Catherine's much more of a politically driven person and I'm much more of a I didn't want it to be political and so she found a really amazing way and, and Fonz to show the beauty show the culture let you feel some of the pain but not lean on the pain as a crutch you know yeah. what I mean and yeah. and it's a it's a tough dance to do and she did it amazing her and Fonz both and um, and, and that's why the film's amazing I mean my job was to deal with uh, superstars and, and their job was to figure out how to tell this story and have it be respectful and educational and also entertaining and that's not easy to do we were a great team yeah. I'm, I'm very proud uh, it's clear it's really clear when when do we get to watch this thing i can't wait to so see it what's going on is uh we're doing festivals for about eight eight months um maybe probably a year and then in the in july um I can't say actually, but it's going to be, uh, we're going to have a theatrical release. Yeah. Um, July this year. Yeah, this July in New York and LA. We're going to try to hopefully get an Oscar qualification. It's going to air on um, H HBO Canada yep. sometime in the fall as well. PBS, The Independent Lens, and uh, in France and Germany, Arte. In Hungary, no, uh, was it Hungary? No, Israel. 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 Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're going. We're you know we're doing the the launch now, sure. and it's going step by step. Uh, Hot Docs is gonna have its Canadian premiere there, and 
fantastic. So we're very excited. It's cool about hot dogs is because that's where I was living in Canada at Niagara on the Lake and I met Christina and Catherine yeah. at hot dogs. They had come meet us at hot dogs and they sat me down. They had meetings with every network and they sat me down and we just, just pitched and pitched and pitched and every network said yes. So hot dogs is really where the film was born. That's fantastic. Uh, so it's good to kind of come back and have a premiere there in Toronto. That's awesome. And now you guys have a, a permanent record of, of something incredibly important and uh, it will live across all of those platforms and I'm sure many, many more. It's so wonderful to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Thank congratulations. You I can't wait Thanks. to see this movie. It's called Rumble, the Indians that Rock the World.